Hello, my name is Grant Suter. I'm an application engineer with Keysight Technologies. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate how the Infinium Oscilloscope software will allow you to gate where, within a waveform, a measurement takes place. Here on the screen you can see I've got uh, four different waveforms. Uh, I've got uh, essentially a clock on channel one in the yellow here, and then three different data lanes. And I am running currently on just some cap previously captured data. Uh, the great thing about this is it will work on live traffic as well. Uh, it just is more helpful to set everything up with the waveforms stopped so we can uh, kind of focus on, on what we're looking at. So the, the first thing I'm going to do here is, is actually make things a little easier to look at. I've got four different waveforms, and it'd be nice to have them each in their own region. So I'm going to right click on the uh, waveform displaying, waveform viewing area here rather, and uh, go to number of grids change it to four. That way I've got each of these individual waveforms in their own viewing area. I can split them out. Now next I'm going to define my gate. You know, Where within these different waveforms do I want my measurements to take place? Uh, so for example on this clock I may want it to be focused on just the rising edge. It's so under math, gating, and you'll see that I get a box here that I can drag around and I can really place it exactly where I want relative to the to the waveform and relative to the trigger. And the way that we perform gating within this software is you'll notice that I'm getting a secondary function. Right? I've got this F1 function, this new waveform that's appeared, and it really is just that section of the clock that is within the gating area. So I've got this rising edge, and here's my, here's my gated rising edge. Notice as I go to a falling edge that, yeah, that's what that waveform is. So define this to the region of the, of the clock where I want to make my measurements. Now things are overlaid on top of each other now. Uh, here in a bit I'll show you where I'm going to move these all to a whole secondary uh, display area so that they're not cluttering up the screen. But uh, first, I'm going to show how we can turn on gates for all the different waveforms. And the easiest way to do that is click on the function to bring up the additional function window here. And sure enough, here's my function 1 gating my channel 1 clock. And you know, it's, it's not that simple to keep track of, uh, of function 1. So I'm going to turn on labels and I've done this in the past, so you can see that I've got it already shown as my label is gated clock. Great, so now in the background you can see it shows up as gated clock. I'm going to do something similar for function 2. Function 2 is going to be a gate of my channel 2 data, right? and I'm going to call that gated data 1. Turn on that display. Function 3 is going to be gating of channel 3. And I'm going to call that data2. Turn that on. Function 4. I'm going to set that to be gating of channel 4. And it's going to be called gated data3. I was saying changes to be whatever I want them to be. Turn that on. All right, great. Close this window. And now you'll see I've, I've got windows for each of these individual waveforms. Right? These are my gating displays. And I can really focus them wherever I want them. And sure enough, here I've got all these overlaid function waveforms, and it's really personal preference. I can drag these down and just display them with their original waveforms, but I think it's going to look nicer if I kind of get these out of the way. I don't necessarily want to see these uh, separate from the original data. So the way I'm going to do that is go to the display, set up display, and I'm going to turn on a whole new waveform, uh, waveform viewing area, new waveform window, and I'm going to tell it I want all these four functions moved to that secondary wa uh, waveform window. Now, I'm only using four functions, but you'll notice that uh, we've got a lot more to play with. So if you wanted up to 16 of these different gated areas, you can do it. Works great. All right, so I've done that. Now what you'll see is I've got these kind of stacked. I've got my original waveforms on top. I've got my gated areas on the bottom. Again, I, still, I really don't want to see these, so I'm going to push them to a different tabbed area. Cool. Now here's just the gated sections of those waveforms. Back on waveform window one, I've got my original data, and I can zoom in and out on this data. You know, still see the big picture, and those gates are still available to manipulate, uh, change them, so I can focus my measurements wherever I want them. Now let me turn on some measurements that that use these gated areas. Here's how. So under measure, add measurement, and I'm going to make an edge to edge measurement to measure the time from the clock. And in this case, the gated clock, rising edge, to one of the data lines. So let's say data 1, and I want either edge of that data, because it could be either pattern. Great, I'm going to turn that on. 
and I want a timing measurement for my clock to each of the data. So data two, turn that on. Data three, turn that on. Now this measurement is specifically measuring the time from a clock transition to the next data. One of my data transitions just in front of my, my clock. Uh, I'm going to make sure I make measurements in both directions. So data to clock. Again, make sure I get my polarity of my edges right. It's the rising edge on the clock, either edge on the data. Turn that on and do that for each of the datas. Great. So here at the bottom of the screen, I've got uh, data for each of my uh, for each of my different types of measurements. And the nice thing is that now, if I were to run this on a live system and trigger a bunch of times, right, it's going to build up statistics and it's going to accumulate more and more data over these over these edges. And I can I can manipulate these anytime I need to uh, collect lots of data. And as I continue to run, it's going to build up more and more statistics. I hope this information has been helpful. Uh, please feel free to contact Keysight with any additional questions.